on Mille Lacs Lake. It's midsummer, and um, you know it's your classic walleye lake. It's got tons of different structure. But the key to Mille Lacs and finding fish on Mille Lacs is forage. Where you find forage, you find fish. Um, it's got tons of different types of forage, probably more than most systems. It's got perch, shiners, crayfish, darter minnows, trout perch, and tulabies. And, and right now, the pattern we're fishing, I, I'm going to say, is primarily going to be tu is tulabi related. You know, there are perch out here on these structures, but we're catching fish that are a little bit off the bottom and they're really fat looking fish. And um, my guess is that they're keying on the tulabies, the, the, the fish that are, you know, four or five inches long. Those are like, you know, the best, the best healthiest thing a walleye can eat to get big and fat. So um, key, forage is the key to catching fish out here. If you find the forage, you see it on the graph, you're probably going to catch fish. So. As Michael was saying, food is a critical thing to catch walleyes throughout the entire year. When you look at trolling like this, the baits available, it's amazing. You have balsa baits, you have plastic baits, you have wide vibrating baits, you have really tight action baits, you have various colors. That's why you see these guys carry so many different uh, baits in their arsenal when they get out and do this type of fishing. Whoop, I got one. Got whoa, one. whoa, 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 there's one. Easy, easy, Michael. We may have the tactic but we are dialing in the speed yeah and maybe and the, the bait in the baits the and we're right yeah the, the one thing that's so critical you know is use your electronics you know because we're out in the middle of Mille Lacs Lake here and we're out in just open basin there's no really structures really around here so the fish are moving around and they're actually ch chasing bait fish so what we did is we actually identified like right back here about three or four blocks back, there's some a really giant pods of bait. And what we put down some GPS coordinates and we're sort of circling that area. Oh, oh. Yeah, we're actually going, we started going from structure to structure, circling around them. It's like the most of the fish we're seeing are way smack in the middle in between the structures, aren't they? Yeah. It's nice with this line counter reel, as you can see how far the fish is away from the boat. I see the leader. 18 feet. I see a shaking head and go. I see a white tip. Yeah, you see that? Look at that. That's one thing with this. You just sort of really, you don't pump them. <laughs> you just, <a> st <laughs> you just slow and steady. That's one thing with this rod is so critical. Ooh, there. that's a beaut. Yeah, that's another solid fish there, yep, James. Yep. Oh boy, he just oh, ate it too. Yep, Look at that. Got him. Nice. We're starting to get, we may actually have to change. Yeah. You may have to change to a different bait. Here's the pliers. Yep. Oh, look at that. Came right nice. Out. Yeah. Boy, I mean, that's the dead boy ate it too. Look at that. I mean, he just plowed the bait. Yeah, that's kind of the key with that lead core is you almost don't, you don't need to set the hook, do no, you? No, no, no. They not get at hooked all. and you, of course, I dropped it right into the net, but that's just another, another nice walleye from the depths of Mille Lacs. So the, yeah, we're trolling out back. on the abysmal plain. <laughs> And there he goes, back to 35 feet, I think. You know, the whole key to uh, catching wildlife like this in open water fishing is replication. And that's what lead core does. It enables you to, uh, to really put the bait at the exact depth of where it was where you caught the last fish. We've actually been experimenting with a, a wide variety of baits. This is a Scatterwrap Husky Jerk, a new bait with a smaller um, like minnow profile. But you can see I got a pile of baits over here that we've been experimenting with. Uh, Michael's caught a few fish with the uh, Shad Dancer, a small perch colored Shad Dancer, but we have had a couple of bites on this bait here. If we get one or two more on this, we <laughs> may soon change to that bit, particular bait. The odd thing yeah. is it's sort of interesting trolling like this on how selective at times the fish can be based on color and you know size of baits vibration and that's why so many different uh, trollers walleye trollers like this actually have so many different baits it's amazing they have boxes and boxes as I'll show you here of which we do too but I'm gonna get my line back out right now and that the last two fish we caught came from a uh, about 170 foot back with lead core, so I'm going to drop it back. That's one thing with this uh, sea line reel, Daiwa sea line reel. It has a line counter feature in, on it that enables you to quickly get back to that depth. We have lead core line. This is Suffolk's 832 12 pound test lead core line, and it is uh, broken up on increments of 30 foot of color. 
So what I'm going to do is put it back out to about and a each color is about five to six foot depth. So you can gauge a, d a couple different ways that how we gauge it is the amount of line out via the line counter, but then also how many colors. So that's yeah, the, exactly. If you don't have a line yeah. counter reel, you can do it with just the, yeah. the color of the line. And I know where I'm sp catching them at. I'm catching them at brown. <laughs> <laughs> where brown hits yellow. <laughs> yep, where brown hits yellow, which is 170 feet as you get to it, you'll see that's right there. Brown hits yellow. That's replication at its finest. finest. Okay, back into the into the holder. So Jimmy was mentioning the reels and the line, and there's actually Suffix makes a couple different types of lead core. The eight, this uh, 832 lead core, which is really a skinny line there's like a 12 pound and an 18 and then the normal dacron or normal lead core line is made with dacron so it's a little bit bigger diameter and takes up a little more space on the reel so the neat thing about this suffix uh, lead core the 832 lead core is the fine diameter so we're using a 27 reel instead of a 47 reel so when you fill this up i can get nine colors of lead core on this reel which is plenty for what we're doing so we have a smaller reel with plenty of line on. So, you know, throughout fishing in the day, you know, this thing's a lot lighter than if you had a bigger reel with heavier lead core on it. Look at that, we're right by our coordinate here and we got Mr. Big. You know, every time you come out here, you know, from day to day, these fish are moving around. They're following the bait fish. And so you come out and you're gonna catch them in this area. The next day you come out here in this whole pot of fish based on the wind or the activity level of the fish may no, be different. Got you got them? Nope, I just got bumped. Ooh, just see, we just passed it over. <laughs> I, yep. Just a little nibbler. I like that. He popped it good, though. Did he? Just didn't get hooked, yep. Bummer. You know, the whole key with this open water trolling, as we were saying, is replication. And it's replication of a couple of different things, speed, where the bait is at in the depth in the water column, that's what's really, really critical about this because the th thing is, is these fish move up and down based on the activity level of the fish. Right now, we're catching a lot of the fish. We got four colors out. We're running uh, scatter app as well as a uh, shad dancer, and we're, p p we're catching these fish right here that are really tight to the bottom. But you come out here during a different day, we get a little bit of clouds and wind and overcast, and those fish will raise up off the bottom. So we may have to position the baits at 25 foot level or as high as maybe the 15 foot level depending on where the fish are at that's what it's a really a lot of experimentation with the individual baits the amount of line you got out the speed the baits are running it's sort of fun it's it, there is it's a real art to being successful at uh at trolling like this that's why so many of the tournament walleye fishermen a lot of those guys are very very good at this technique <laughs> and it catches really big fish throughout a good portion of the year at different points in times. Whether to hold the rod or put it in a holder, I don't know that it matters that much. Um, I think sometimes, you know, if you're pumping a rod and dealing with some neutral fish, you can get them to bite, but where James and I are fishing, we can only use one rod a piece. He's got his in a holder. He's got it, the drag loose and the clicker on, so if a bite goes, he hears it. I'm uh, running the tiller here and I'm, kind of have to keep busy so you know when I'm doing this I like to be working the rod more often than not I just get bored putting it in the rod holder but so far today the two biggest fish have come on his rod so I you know it's it's a horse apiece Peace, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one thing I was going to say about drag and drag you know having the drag backed off is really key and I guess a rule of thumb I always use is if you're trolling I always set the drag to the point where like if you pump the rod, it slips a little. That to me lets me know that I have enough out to where if a fish grabs it when I'm moving forward, it'll pull in, it'll be pulling line out. So I just can give it a quick pump and that's taking drag out. If I have it set too tight, it won't. If I set it way too loose, you know, it's taking too much. So just kind of to the point of where you kind of give it a quick jerk and some drag comes out. To me, that's the rule of thumb I go by for having the drag set right for this kind of trolling, so.